Hi everyone, it's Josh from Dungeon Boys, welcoming you back for another episode of Adventure as we play through The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. In our last episode, we bid farewell to our new friends at the Pixie Kingdom. Rusty recovered from his first bath, and we uncovered clues to pieces of our missing past. What secrets will we uncover, and what adventure will we find? Join us as we explore more of The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Welcome back to more Dungeon Boys. It's a new recording day. Josh may take this out. He may not. Everybody, soft golf claps to Josh, who's been editing the show. Um, to reveal, maybe it's bad to reveal a timeline for the show, but uh, we're recording this the week that episode three released. Yeah. So we're at way ahead of you. We're way ahead of them. You're listening to this. God knows where we are in the future. Eons and if the we're probably yeah. recording the next episode, <laughs> <laughs> the, given our schedules, if the world continues to go the way it is, where it's probably the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. no one's but at least it. you got something good to listen I'm to. I'm actually in the mood. I know right a little now. bit about that. The apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Dennis does know a little bit about that. This is the first episode we're recording back. After our launch live stream, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. During that, Zenus had a kind of a thing that he had to go through. Um, we will kind of document that in future YouTube videos. So. I survived all thanks to the Udi, the <laughs> most comfortable piece of equipment you'll ever own. No, Zenus, that sponsorship's over. <laughs> They're not sending me another free one. I'm gonna, we'll see. I'll, I'll send them that. Cool. Winnie the Pooh, send the Winnie the Pooh. Okay, let's get back to D and D. The last thing that happened, you guys learned some secrets from the carousel the carousel in the witchlight carnival each of the horses had a they had this weird name pairing that you guys very quickly got um oh, bryce. bryce did a great job with that puzzle you guys very quickly learned what the puzzle was you the the horses on the carousel revealed some information about who has the things that you lost the whole hook to this very campaign for us is that you all lost these things and you feel compelled to find them now of course along the way hopefully we've found more things to make you curious there's obviously something fishy going on in the witch like carnival etc etc but you now know who has your lost things you don't know where they are kind of you do based on the secrets that you learned you learned two of you learned that bavlorna bavlorna bright straw blight straw i want to say bright straw mm. bavlorna blight straw has it's the thing, the lost thing from I believe, uh, Prince and Eric, and then Rusty and Mixed lost thing is with Scabatha Nightshade, which talk Scabitha. talk about a name, <laughs> Scabatha dude, pretty rough um, right there. So yeah, we're gonna get back into that. You guys have just gotten off the carousel. Uh, Diana is now um, looking at you, Diana Cloppington, the young lady mm -hmm. centaur lass who is very very much sounds like this. Kinda. It's been a while since I played her, but she's a she's a country gal. She's a horse girl, <laughs> um, and uh, she is looking at you quizzically. And she says, "Well, y'all learn anything uh, useful?" Not really. She looks. She she looks at you. <laughs> Crank a it up bit, again. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit frustrated. Like I, I almost swear those horses have some sort of. You know, some sort of secrets. As y'all could see earlier, I, I mean exactly um, magically allowed to speak on certain things. So uh, I hope y'all learned a thing or two from them horses on the carousel. They might be magical, but we couldn't figure out the puzzles. Which is not smart enough. I figured them out. I'm just screwing with you. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> I knew you were screwing. With I, I didn't. You, I didn't put a bag over my head. <laughs> I watched you do it. Yeah, I almost heard it. To be honest with you, I'm not that far away. Um, I was waiting to see where you're going because I'm like, wait a minute, did I miss something here? Wait a second. <laughs> you don't have to tell me what you learned. We don't have to go over that. I got to get this carousel back ripping and rolling. But just <clears throat> suffice it to say, if y'all are figuring out what's going on in prison, prison. What's going on in prison? In prison. <laughs> What's going on? Where the carnival came from? And if y'all uh, are gonna figure out where all these things are happening, whatever, whatever's going on with the carnival, good luck to you. And if I can help you in any way, just let me know, okay? You're a good egg. Yeah, we much appreciate the help. 
That's what that's what Burley always called me. Yeah. Everybody seems to like Burley. Yeah, I love that bubble. He's, he's a nice guy. Smart man. Smart man. I like his pumpkin. He's got a great pumpkin. All right, fellas. Uh, get on out of my line. Everybody at the carousel's fix. Go ahead and hop on. That was crisp. That's a good whistle. That way it Thanks. sounded like it was far away. I like it. Immediately, cool. eight people get crushed in the riot. <laughs> The riot. Oh, yeah. Carousel. There's people climbing on top of it. The, the image of, like, people just pushing and shoving and punt. Like, you know how back in the day cars were so slow, so, like, 20 miles an hour would, like, melt your face off? This I just picture all these people, like, racing to the carousel, and they hop on it. It just barely moves, and they're just shrieking with joy. Um. Anyway, I don't know if Josh could edit all that in. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's already there. You just got to uncover it. Okay, so uh, I stride off proudly. I find mind brimming with new knowledge. Prince, where are you going? I'm I'm, I'm just going. (laughs) Just I'm just walking away. He stretched Um, that one out. That was an accident, I'm sure. Um, There, there are some things we need to talk about as a group, as a whole. Sounds good. So I'm gonna wait until we get like farther away. Okay, and then. Closer. Hey, they're leaving without us. We should probably catch up. Yeah, I got that. I'm a follow. <laughs> we can do that. I, I, I do too. As yeah. as the four of you are walking to wherever it is you're walking, um, the two of you in the back feel a slight a slight breeze behind you. And Rusty, as you turn Excuse around, <laughs> as you turn around <laughs> at your height, um, with your newly found clean body, uh, a a certain kinku that you are familiar with kettle steam um cloaked and trying to not reveal herself to the rest of the crowd has appeared next to you and she nudges you and says hey 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 Hey, rusty just want to let you guys just want to let you guys know that the they're they're about to crown the witch light monarch it's gonna be happening soon we don't have much time to come up with a plan okay um can we we use it or just yeah yeah you got yeah we should probably do something about that. Um, do you think we could just ask for it? That won't work, but the plan the plan is up to you. Ask okay. for it. Well, except for, ask for it. Go ahead and just, he's not going to give it to you if you ask for it, but I'm, I want to back off and let you guys handle this thing. You've been doing a good job so far. Would you like a part in the, in the plan? If you need me, I'll be here to help, or I can just run interference, you know? Okay. That's uh, uh, that's very helpful of you. I appreciate it. She she crosses her arms and like begins to tap her little bird foot, waiting on the rest of you to make decisions. Cool. So listen, guys. I've got a plan. Oh. That's how these it's things try. Tr- <laughs> it's true. It's a, a tricky plan. Um, I'm not opposed to making a fool of myself. <laughs> um, when the situation calls for it, so. The hot dog in Forced gave me an idea. You like, directly? <laughs> the hot dog directly <laughs> imparted this knowledge to this, you. Indirectly. This, this isn't going where I think it is, is it? I don't, I don't like to imagine that you and I think very similarly. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe. Um, no, so you know cats are uh, lactose intolerant in some way. Yes, you can't. You can't give us milk. I can't have milk. It's just fact of life. I um, didn't know that, but it makes so much more sense. Now. Gives us the runs, right? So we have uh, means of making ourselves small. We've talked about cutting the chain, right? Um, right. I'm willing to be a center of attention. This plan, I'll let you know, is is called the classic chili dog. I knew it. <laughs> Classic chili dog. Kettle steam goes, ooh. <laughs> lay, lay it on us. What you got on will, that chili dog? I will load myself up with okay. milk and chili dogs. Okay. Did, didn't you say that was a, a bad combination? It's a bad combination, yes. But it's an eye-catching combination, too. I will... Oh, God. I, I, I will step out to, to claim... If things come to it, um, the the witch the, the crown for the witchlight monarch, and then um, if timed properly, I will release 
on stage. <laughs> yeah, how do you, how do you time that properly? Why um, did you say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Kettle steam can hardly contain herself. What? You do realize I can create magical items that can produce smell and sound on a timed trigger. Or with a code word or anything, we wouldn't have to have perfectly timed bowel movements on stage. That's true. But <laughs> and then again, I, I can just look like anybody we want to. So whoever they call, I can just be like, oh, that's me. That's, yeah. That's also true. Yeah. But this is funnier. He's got a point. And I want to, th- well, not literally, figuratively, I want to throw this in their face. Um, Please don't. But also, Please don't. just imagine, I said figuratively, just imagine... The Witchlight Monarch, something that they've been doing for a long time, steps on stage, soils himself violently. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say that that does that's <laughs> it's hilarious. It is and it would be enough of a distraction for you guys to do whatever you need to do to get the watch. Got a good point. I I, I gotta say, like, I might be more distracted by what's going on than actually That's why you know about it now. You can focus and pay attention so that when the time comes and you see me crumple on the floor, you'll know what to do. I've, I've been here all night, and I did, I witnessed, Rusty, I witnessed your, your dandelion trick earlier with the farting dandelion. Did you think it was funny? Oh, it was it was hilarious. The monkey didn't like it. it was, I don't trust the monkey. Well, it, I was easily amused. But here's the thing. People, not only is this carnival exceedingly magical, they've already seen that trick once. So, Prince is, of the four of you, uniquely poised to possibly get the Witchlight Monarch. Eric has, I've seen you threaten several people. Rusty, again, the fart humor. Also, the lewd Pixie Kingdom incident that I heard all about. There was more than one chili dog over there. Uh, and I thought someone left that laying around. <laughs> uh, and and Mick, you kind of walking around like you kind of half exist and half don't exist, which I, th- I think is your deal, which is fine. So it, I I, I saw earlier where where Prince you know help, tried to help a a crying child, uh, as well as I'm not did, I, did did you give a button to the monkey? I don't remember if you did that. I don't yeah, yeah, we, we all did. Yeah, we all gave. We buttons. all gave buttons. You all gave buttons as a very monkey, happy did. monkey. Yeah. Uh, but I then I you don't know, think I had a spare button to give at the time. I don't remember. Just seemed to be operating with genuine kindness. So I know your group of four certainly. It's got to be one of you, and I believe Prince may be uniquely poised to get gain the witch-like monarch crown. So, all that to say, a very magical place is not used to real. Pooping pants. <laughs> Life and death struggle. I just had a thought oh, for how I'm going to escape. <laughs> I'll use the pixie dust <laughs> to shoot it off. You know what? Like a shooting star. <laughs> the more I hear this, the more I'm on board. Please forgive <laughs> my profanity, but like a shooting star. <laughs> <laughs> just... So from like he does it, he <laughs> plays it up. Prince falls over, witch and light come back. Like, oh my gosh, what's going on? From like the crumpled position, he just <laughs> slides across the floor and then <laughs> shoots off. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> All right. So you know, if that is true, it would, it would have to be like a, a balloon you let go. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Have Got a you- couple loops while you're up there. Have you been here in years past to witness the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch before? No, this is my first year. Remember, I came here because I lost contact with my patron, Zibilna. And I see. she is also the patron of this carnival. She is, you know, the where it gets most of its power and, and joy from, or at least she, she once was. I don't know why I've become disconnected, and obviously there's something strange going on here, so... Uh, no, this is my first time. Well, is... We need to talk to one of our good eggs and see if we can find out what exactly goes on in the witch, the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. Yeah, well, we better hurry. I don't think we got a lot of time. No. I need to start loading up on Chili Dogs right now. 
for the evacuation followed by the evacuation. Yes. Got it. I love it. <laughs> it's a solid plan, ironically. I'm not going to call it a good plan, but I, I think it's it could work. It's a great plan. You're right. I have a general idea of how to get the watch during the distraction. What do you got? Well, we have the pixie dust and we have the potion that makes us smaller. Yeah. If I shrunk myself down to a small enough size and then use the pixie dust to fly up to the top of the big top and stayed there with a string tied off to me, that whenever the watch comes out, I could lower myself down and grab it while he is being distracted and someone could pull the string back up and extract me through the top of the tent. But I don't know when the watch comes out. I don't know if it'll be in his hand. I don't know if it'll be in his pocket. What I do know from what I've seen of Ke- of Mr. Witch is that the, the, the watch is attached to his belt by a chain. Remember, he wears a dapper suit. His, the watch is typically in his pocket and attached to his belt with a chain. And he could check it any number of times during the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch as he uh, does I, not typically enjoy be, being the center of attention. I carry plenty of tools with me all the time. Cutting through the chain shouldn't be an issue, I assume. Um, the other option is I am in possession of a spell known as Catapult, and I can launch a small object uh, many, many yards away. And in which case, as long as I could disconnect the chain and touch the watch, I could launch it in any direction and have another person there ready to catch it. I think either of them. That sounds like where me and you come in. Yeah, I think you should catch it since you can shapeshift. Does she know that? (laughs) Does she know that? (laughs) Do you? you? Oh. Yeah, Yeah. that's like your thing. He's a mimic. My mimic. You don't like telling everybody you're a shapeshifter. Right, I don't. He, he's, yeah. I was asking, does she know that? He, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. We we she had a brief, dis- a brief discussion about it because she was using, like, some of, like, Zabilma's power or whatever. Oh, yeah, like, she's a warlock. Disguise herself. Yeah. So. So, she so can do a little bit of that. Since he can uh, disguise himself, I think he should uh, get it. Since he can change into someone, and then grab it, and then change someone's back. Right? Okay. And okay. depending on what the gods think of the idea, I'm small enough I could actually ride the catapulted watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is turning into quite a plan. Hold on to the clasp. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I am asking, would I be, like, whenever I'm shrunk down to tiny size, would I be able to... It says you cannot, it cannot be like a carried item, which is, so you can't like reach into somebody's pocket and like shoot something out of their pocket. Okay. But, I mean, like if I wanted to use like a throwing dagger, obviously I'm holding it. I, it is a carried item. Yeah. So, would, would the magic not work because I'm c- technically carrying the no, watch? No, it can't be a worn item. Is worn? I'm thinking, yeah, that's the phrasing they use a lot. But yeah, because you, you, you can hold it. And just like cast it and on a stone and throw it out. I thought the word they used was carried, but I maybe can't wrong. be like somebody's well, no, armor. If it's carried, yeah, you can't like shoot it off. I'll do some. You can do a quick look up for the wording, like, but uh, it's going to take a lot to deny the rule of cool on this. Do not and it, miss and launch, Mister Witch. And it doesn't make a whole lot. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for you not to be able to. I yeah. could see if it's if it's still attached. Mm-hmm. If you are unable to detach it from his body. In, it's the whole worn thing. It's still worn, so the magic isn't going to work. Yeah. It says worn or carried. So, okay. like, as it's falling, you could choose and be like, no, yeah. you shoot off, it shoots up to 90 feet Yeah, away. so that's the point of, that's, catapult is not an item that you hold that you can, like, in, in, improve your throwing speed. I guess you could. You just have to throw it first. So, essentially, you could, if you could kind of get it to the edge of his pocket and snip it, this is DM speak. I guess you could snip it as long as I guess you're not touching it and he's not wearing it. I think you're good. When the object strikes something, the thing it strikes and the object both take three d eight bludgeoning damage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He would die. 
Oh, I straight would. up. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless we say like he's a hundred feet away and the magic ends and it starts like decreasing speed because it like at ninety feet. I would um, like everyone at home to see just, my nine just hit points of health. Yeah. Um, my level around. one squish. We might be getting oh, close no. to a well level dexterity up. saving throw. If he makes a dexterity saving throw, then it wouldn't technically impact him, and he wouldn't take the damage. Okay, yeah, so Eric, it's a solid idea there, but um, I gotta say, I'm not a great athlete or anything. I'm willing to give it a shot, but um, maybe you should be uh, maybe it's, you should be nearby in case I fumble. The catch is not super important; more the retrieval, as right. I will have teeny tiny legs and no way to get away. Why? Well, I got actually, you. I got you. maybe. I can catch it, and then you can grab him, and then you can just, like, shimmy your way out. You catch it, pass it off, I'll get it out of the crowd. He could fly away. I just had an idea. Do you guys see any pumpkins around? There's one on the dude's head over there. Yeah. Surely there are a few other in the carnival somewhere. Sure. Sure. What's your idea? Think he could be a Burley? Everybody, meet Burley. Wouldn't it be so helpful if Mr. Witch dropped his watch? And Burley was there to pick it up, and no one would think any the wiser. But I don't have the voice. I would think you don't, you don't have, have to, to say a whole lot. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Just a thought. I'm, I'm sorry. Back to so, my. So we kill Burley. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's take, take that, skin. that back a second. But out of character, the thing like the the pixie dust lasts for an hour, but in that hour you have one minute of flight time. Yeah. So you could just fly down cut it fly back up well i'm flying up to i'm flying up to be in like waiting position i might run out of time but you you i mean you could like grab on there's got to be like support struts up there yeah you wouldn't have to burn through the hole just an option i think the potion once it starts i mean the the timer is going isn't it it's not like it's an hour of flight time or a minute of flight time so like if you're standing on the ground you fly up it takes 30 seconds to fly up you can fly back down in 30 seconds whenever you want. I can fall Mission back down. Yeah, kind of exactly. yeah. I recently watched that movie. Oh, I, I mean, can fall yeah. with style. Throughout my head, the whole time the whole time we've been talking about this, in my head, every time you say a part of the plan, I'm picturing it happen visually. <laughs> Me too. The way they yeah. do in like heist movies, so it's like you talking over the this narration is the <laughs> as it's occurring. Uh, this is the thing you animate, fans. Yeah, I was exist. about to say, this is why I want something animated. <laughs> back in character. Rusty, if you wanted to fly, I've I got two little baggies of dust from the from the gentleman. <laughs> if you, if you want to get, get real, real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, on, but seriously, if if that was an option as well, so you could escape, you could use one of yours to get down there. I'll give you an extra, and you can get yes, out of there really quick. That would that would be helpful just to have it as a backup. I don't know that I will need the second one if I don't run out of time on the first one. And if that's the case, I'll just return the other one to you. That sounds fair. If you Does he still have it? Can I point to it? Rusty, what about your, uh, you got a balloon pirate ship? I thought about that. You ride that? I don't think it will withstand the Mach 3 speeds <laughs> <laughs> that are required. Okay, so it sounds like we have a Tent Decent plan. Apart. Everyone, someone remind me what what plan we have currently and who we need to speak to because we're we're running out of time. We we have we've moments, minutes left. Chili dogs. I'm going to go get some chili dogs and drink about a gallon of milk. After that, we've only got about an hour before things go south, literally and figuratively. Not even chew them. Just you just three. Them. <laughs> if we want to, you three will go grab a pumpkin, dress this man up as Burley on the off chance we need him, and then. Rusty will do what Rusty does. I Rusty, go, go ahead and get in position. I I got Eric. I got this disguise gear here. Eric, me and you. Don't we want to... Oh, boy. No, you go. <laughs> Don't we want to know how, how this thing is going to go? What if what if it happens and... What if they bring you outside to crown the Witchlight Monarch and then the whole plan goes away? That's a good point. We should yes. go talk to someone as well. Uh, the, the, the Horsington lady at the carousel. Clopping right? Her, yeah. Same thing. yeah. That one. Burley would know too if we wanted to. So we only walked like five the feet plan. away and we yeah, just turned around. Yeah. I think Burley should if be the one should. that we talk to. And we should let Burley know not to be seen Allowing wherever him. the watch gets picked up. That's a good right. point. You guys go to meet him first. I'm going to stop by, grab my supplies, Actually, and then I'll meet you there. 
If someone could just catch me up on it, I need to make a few tools. Errands. Would that be okay with you if I made, uh, like a hook thing that I could have on, that I can latch myself onto the watch so I don't have to make a dex check in the middle of the <laughs> flight wanna, over? Yeah, if you want to, um, make a tiny. What is saddle. you're an artificer? You make things. Is there any sort of like gameplay mechanic involved in making things? Just I only there's only a mechanic for magical right. things that I make. There's not really a. I think it's kind right, of. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a mechanic have, in my head. I have tinkers tools. There might be a mechanic based on that. Yeah, look at your look at your class. I'm what's, pretty what's sure when you drink the potion, everything that you're wearing it shrinks, right? Yeah. Yeah. I but, would hope so. Yeah. Me too. But there's nothing there's nothing for tinkering other than magical tinkering. It might be part of the tinkers tools. I've got a mechanic in my head that we're gonna make up real quick. Do it. Instead of googling it, okay? Okay. All right. So you're gonna Rusty's gonna take a moment to go find some supplies. Um, you need, you're trying to support your tiny weight, not your, rusty not weight. your rusty weight, correct? Correct. All right. So I want you to roll, um. But I mean, I'll be making them rusty sized. And then they'll shrink? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So with your in- intelligence would be your tinkering. What do you think? Yeah. That's what it usually yeah. is. Okay. In- roll an intelligence roll with your modifiers and all and your, your, Nice. Watch your mechanics. Uh, 16. 16? All right. Very well. So this is the mechanic I had in my head. I set a DC 15 um, saving throw, or a, a DC 15 check for you to beat. If you failed that, I was going to make you roll um, like a, I was going to make, we we're going to roll a constitution on the hook whenever you finally used it at a very low DC. Mm-hmm. And if something catastrophic happened and the hook failed at like below five, we, I would have caused the hook to fail. But the, the fact that you rolled over the 15, you've made your hook perfectly. You will not have to redo that roll later. Nice. And do we want to just say that I have like wire cutters or whatever to cut the thing? Or do I need to make something for Tinkerer's cutting? tools? Yeah. I imagine Neil cutting knows pliers with, some, with, the, with the, the sharp bitey things on the back end or in the Tinkerer's set. I think just a regular. What? I don't know what the sharp bitey thing is. You know, with most sets like needle nose pliers or pliers in general, on the very back, right next to the yeah the, the, hinge, the clipper thing yeah, yeah. a yeah. wire cutter the sharp bitey part wire <laughs> yep I have a sharp bitey part you guys can call it whatever <laughs> weird thing you want to call it but it's called the sharp bitey part oh well thank God for that <laughs> quick question out of character like. What is the goal when we get the, the watch? We're going to blackmail him. Right. For I think that's an in-character question. Let's go back to in-character and ask that before you separate. Because they know stuff. Hey, quick question, fellas. What? Just just wondering, like, what what is our ultimate goal here? Like, what are we trying to do? Burley's the one that asked us to get the watch. Are we supposed to take it back to him? Or Kettle Steam is no. rubbing her he wings said together. the watch would give us leverage over those two because they know more than they're letting on. That's right. They they are by the balls held. <laughs> and we will Kettle hold. Steam's Kettle Steam's black eyes get very get very narrow when she says What is it what is it, Kettle Steam? If only we do someone who knew how to apply that leverage in such a way. You know anyone, Kettle Steam? I think you all could do it. Prince is right. They know more than they're letting on. And as a warlock with a patron who is, as Prince says, by the balls held, figuratively, of course, for Zabilna, I'm trying to get my powers back. I'm limited. And I don't know if we have any warlocks in the crowd. I don't believe we do of the... Yo, I got you. You you have the the scent. You part of the club. (laughs) You can imagine how it might feel being cut off from your power source. Well, yeah. A water wheel... When the river is low, et cetera, et cetera, I'm not about living that way continually. So we're going to use some leverage to figure out what is going on. Why don't we give you the watch once we have it? The four of us, or however many want to go, will face Witch and Light. You can keep the watch away until we signal you that it's safe. I don't want any risk of them getting it from us. Because they seem kind of strong. We don't know... If, if I have to retrieve the watch from behind his back, then I can't fire the watch through 
Mr. Witch. I'd have to launch it from behind him, so I don't know which exit of the tent it will be landing outside of. Perhaps it would be a good idea to have someone stationed at each exit, ready to retrieve the watch, and yours truly. I like that. That's a good idea. That's yeah, it'll how, work. Let's do it. That sounds and, uh, like... Hey, Prince, I don't, I don't know if we should give her... Well, like, I don't, she's got that kind of look. Like, she might be up to something. Hey, I don't know. quit listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> she's so surprised by that comment that it works. <laughs> she's so... St- <laughs> She's she like she yeah she's looking she's looking at at Mick whispered to, to Prince she's trying to figure out what he's saying then she turns to, to Rusty like what <laughs> and then uh she but she does say okay so it sounds like maybe Mick and Rust and Eric will be at either exit to the tent I could go up on top of the tent and pull you up you needed someone to pull you up not if I have the second fly powder thing. okay so very well. Then I think it is best for me to just hide in the shadows. Then I agree. I trust the four of you. I ready, don't ready need for a watch. watch retrieval if needed. I will be at the ready for watch retrieval. I'll be watching uh, with a disguise from inside uh, the tent. Right. Again, we right. should very quickly go and speak to someone and make sure that what we're planning is going to work. Indeed. Let's go. And then we will need a meeting space afterwards. Let's go back to the carousel. We all meet at the carousel. Directly after. Right. I like it. At high noon. It might take me a little bit longer <laughs> to get there. <laughs> but we'll see. You will take your time. I'll sort that I out. I know a good place to get a bath. Maybe. Well, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. If I do end up flying out of it, I'm going <laughs> to throw myself right into a river. <laughs> Strip down. Okay. So, <clears throat> Kettle Steam uh, says very well. I saw I saw Burley right over this way. Let's go. All right, here we go. Bustle, bustle. Can, I, can I stop to get some chili dogs and milk? Yes, you are. You will not be present for this conversation. You're going to be down in chili dogs. I don't think he will too, since you're going to be making the hook. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's just going to be us. I right. picture this like montage thing, like as the plan is going off. Like there's like a split screen. We're all, where be, all of us... we're all like gathering and like kind of looking around as we creep towards the carousel, and you're just like holding the back of your pants, <laughs> like running up towards the top of the thing. <laughs> Diving into the water. <laughs> my, my tail is like wrapped around, like squeezing. Like <laughs> so, Zenus, one thing that's important to me is that you have made Prince as a character the type of character that's willing to poop themselves in public. You're going to have to maintain a semblance of that energy <laughs> throughout the campaign. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's not forget your floating ledger. Oh, yeah. Is it it's, taking it's, all this yeah, in? Yeah, it's writing everything down. <laughs> there you Sketches, go. Just, just everything. <laughs> so if I do end up flying, it's going to have like a little, like, it'll have like a drawing up here and then like a trail of goop, and then it'll have like Catman <laughs> arrow. Disgusting. All right. As you're running away, <laughs> you're like... Quotation marks. Disgusting. Your eyes are like watering and burning. You like take off the crown and just like... <laughs> <laughs> toss it off. Okay. You guys... Uh, Mick and Eric arrive standing in front of Burley. Burley kind of sounded like this, didn't he? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Something like that? A little bit, yeah. Okay. If he didn't, he does now. Gotcha. So you guys arrive in front of Burley. Somewhere in the distance, chili dogs are being purchased, and Rusty (coughs) is sitting at a picnic table working on his hook. There is someone calling out, Ten minutes until the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. See Mr. Witch and Mr. Light live in color and in person for the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. Ten minutes to go. Prince is like bent over. I don't know if I can take another one. (laughs) Sweating. Ten minutes. Hold. (laughs) As you guys arrive at Burley, he says, Oh, my new friends, what brings you over here to me? Yeah, we're in a little bit of a hurry, but look, we're, we're trying to um, trying to <clears throat> retrieve the watch. Shh, shh, keep your voice down. We're trying to retrieve the watch. <laughs> we're trying to retrieve a thing, and there's a plan that's somewhat formulated. We're gonna try it, but we're gonna see if we can dress up uh, Eric here to look kind of like you. Was it possible that I could grab a pumpkin while we were heading to Burley? Uh. No, but he says, ooh, oh, okay. I have just a thing. Give me just 30 seconds. He turns around. You guys are like standing next to the big top. He walks through the shrubbery. 
into the staff area behind the big top thing, and he comes back with an extra pumpkin, oh, and nice. he says, this is my fancy pumpkin for when I go out on the town. Yeah, you can, you can definitely tell. My yeah. Sunday go to meet yeah. pumpkin. He, yeah. says, <laughs> he says, see here, the pumpkin I'm wearing has a jaggedy smile. But this pumpkin has a straight smirk. Was one side is flat, the other side has a has a curve up. It's kind of like a smirk. It makes me kind of, it's kind of like a knowing thing. Like whenever I walk into fancy places, they look at me like, "Ooh, he knows what he's doing." Even though he's got a pumpkin on his head, you can use this one. Nice. Burley, I I like your style. I really like your style. Ooh, wait, I'll be right back. He takes another thirty seconds and he heads back into the shrubbery and then he comes back out and he says he's holding a big pair of overalls. He says, you're going to need these if you want to look like Burley. It's the only thing I wear. These are my fancy ones. They're a little darker blue than these blue ones. You see how light these blue ones are? You say the only thing you're wearing? What? Yeah. Mm. He puts his arms out and gives you a spin. I see. Well, that works, because um, I didn't know if I had anything your size in my disguises. So. Uh, it's... Is it possible that I can give uh, Burly all my other stuff? Since I've got arrows, sword, leather, armor, all that. <laughs> we'll just you can just say, leave that sitting there somewhere. We'll just say you kind of pack it into the overalls. It's fine. It's not okay. Fine. <laughs> it's, you're, you got very few minutes to get changed up. Okay. Um, Is this Burley's cousin while I'm working on the hooks? Yeah. yeah. Okay. As soon as I'm done with the hooks, I'd like to go hunt them down and find out. I'll let you know when you arrive. I'll try to okay. make it feel natural. I just need to know, like, if being in the top of the tent is what I need to do. Okay. So I, I could see, like, me and Burley are trying to, like, get his pumpkin adjusted just straight. And okay. you, know, you come up. So. Uh, thanks, Burley. I owe you. Kettle Steam sits, is looking up at Burley and says, Yes, Burley, we do owe you. We do have a few questions as well. Firstly, um, how... Does the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch usually go? And he says, "Oh, we will. We do it the same every evening." Um, and let me tell you what it is <coughs> that he does. Um, he says, "Every night, all of the spectators will take their seat. Der Legrand escorts Mister Witch from his wagon to the coronation, leaving Thacko behind to guard the staff area." Mr. Witch and Derlegrand will stand on the sidelines next to Candlefoot as Mr. Light gives an opening speech. You know how he he does his high voice stuff. And he does the speech and he has his witch light vein. Mr. Witch, oh, excuse me. Uh, doo, 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 doo. And the, the, during the speech is whenever the witch light monarch will be uh, selected. Candlefoot holds the hat box that contains the monarch's crown. Mr. Witch will remove the crown out of the gold, uh, uh, the crown of golden butterflies. It's got golden butterflies. Uh, from the hat box, and he will place it on the monarch's head. Mr. Light knights the monarch with the witch light vein, and happy clowns will shower all three in glitter. And then, after that, is the most fun part. Witch and Light, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, will escort the monarch on a circuit. Of the stage, they'll go all the way around the stage, and Palasha will sing in her beautiful voice while they go around the stage. And then, after that, Mr. Light is going to lead the monarch on a parade through the whole carnival, with all the other while all the other guests follow. And that is when I'll be somewhere else setting off fireworks. Uh, that sounds really professional. Let's hope that works. And normally, whenever I'm shooting off the fireworks. That's when Derlegrand takes Mr. W- Mr. Witch back to the, back to his wagon. I'm really hoping these are some fast acting chili bills because having all this happen on a parade route is probably not the best yeah. idea. You, as you walked right. up, you were catching up this. You were catching this explanation, and now you have arrived to the conversation. So, and fireworks after, right? Fireworks after what? After, after the fireworks, yeah, fire. No, no, fireworks after the crowning and everything. How do you how do you know when uh, when to start the fireworks if you're not there? Crowning in the crowning in the big top, right? When parade when the parade starts after crowning, right? That's when Burley me sets off the fireworks. Yeah, is there any chance you could start those fireworks a little early? 
I don't think Mr. Witch and Mr. Light would really like that, but then again, I guess they're not going to really like the idea of us stealing the watch. It would why? help as a distraction. Why? Well, you're not going to steal it, so I will. So I really hope I don't hurt your reputation. Well, I think I'm kind of the mastermind behind this plan. He's got a point. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, you know, what's the word? Mastermind. Genius. No. no. Bugbear. Um, implicated. Ah. Gazuntai. Thank you. So, there are a few different places. It doesn't really matter where I stay, as if he's going to make a circuit of the whole stage, I can drop from anywhere. Or I could be on the bottom of the crown box whenever Candlefoot carries it out and jump across whenever he turns his back after picking up the crown. Does he take the whole box, or does he just take the crown out of the box? Candlefoot holds the box and opens it. Mr. Light, isn't that what I said? Mr. Witch removes the crown. Yeah, sorry. Mr. Witch removes the crown and puts the crown on. Mr. Light has the witch light vein, and he's the one who knights them. So, yes, Candlefoot holds the box and opens it for Mr. Witch, who then takes the crown. I see. Got it. I could be on the underside of the box, and whenever he picks up the crown and turns away to place the crown on Prince's head, I lunge from the bottom of the box and grab it. Got it. Can you get in in place in that amount of time? Candlefoot's a good egg, right? Candlefoot's a good egg. Okay. Then yes, I should be able to. If I can't get in that position, then I will go ahead and head up to the top of the tent. You know where Terry can't be. Look, nah, blah. You know where that guy would be right now? <laughs> Candlefoot should be right over there. He points to the right. Should be. Candlefoot. Yeah, he, he should be making. He should be. He should be making his way to the big top right now because we're about to begin. Okay, I will go ahead and get in position then. Right, we'll go hide in the in the audience. I will wait for the signal. Um, it's all coming. Um, Eric. <laughs> If anyone asks Temporary. why you're not, if anyone asks why you're not getting ready with the fireworks, tell them that you just really want to watch the crowning one time for once in your life. Maybe even cry. <laughs> people don't. People usually will do what I ask if I cry. How do they see you cry inside a pumpkin? If I really want them to do it, I take off the pumpkin. Oh, okay then. Also, bugbear tears notoriously big. Right. I, I got you on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We ready? Yeah, We're doing yeah. this? Yes. I'm going to go hunt down Candlefoot. All right, good luck. Kettlesteam says, I'll prepare myself at one of the exits. I'll, I'll be watching. I'll be watching. No, excuse me. I'll be watching from inside the big top in the right. disguise. Good deal. We'll meet up at the carousel after. Burley says, he like, he's like so lax about this. He just turns around and heads into the, he parts the shrubbery again with magic. And he puts, a, he, he doesn't even turn around. He puts a thumbs up and he says, I'm off to prepare the fireworks. Good luck. I mean, Secretly, he is yeah. the mastermind behind the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. He's got to be. It's just so casual about it. As soon as he walks away, he just takes off the pumpkin. Who's a weak-minded fool? <laughs> <laughs> Strahd, his, <laughs> his fangs come down. All right, um, moving along. Uh, the three of you and Kettle Steam are headed towards the big top, I presume, right. to get ready mm-hmm. with the crowd. Um, Rusty, you are walking towards Candlefoot, who you see approaching you. Boy, I don't remember what voice I did for Candlefoot. He had no voice, and then we found it, and it was kind of nasally, wasn't it? Maybe. I don't remember. I remember it's going to be what it's going to be. I remember we made a joke, like, maybe it was better if he didn't have his voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe it'll be like this, then. That sounds that sounds about right. I like that. <laughs> so as, we're, as we're going in, can I, like, I want to, like, like support you like bodily like you don't look so good man. you doing okay my stomach hunched over you're you're with us no no okay i'm, I'm headed towards candlefoot you're no, headed towards right. something hold it together man you got this i'm trying hold it hold it together i don't have a lot of time <laughs> i know i know it'll be okay you see it one my stomach is slightly distended <laughs> <laughs> for now <laughs> I think it's kicking. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be quite a show. All right. You approach Candlefoot. Let's deal with that. 
Hello, Candlefoot. You remember me? I don't... Yeah, you were one of the people who brought my voice back. Yes. I was instrumental in that, in fact. Mm. Thank you. Again, thank you so much. I have a favor to ask. Kate? I have a, I'm doing a favor for another friend, and I need you to help me with that favor. You know, it surprises me you have so many friends. <laughs> me too. Could I hide in your sleeve for a little while? I won't be this size. I can shrink myself down to a, like a fairy size, and I need to be in your sleeve. You need to be... For like the next hour or so. In my or sleeve less. for the next hour or so? Or less. Or less. For what? For what purpose? It's almost time for the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. That's where we're both headed, I assume. Yes. It, uh, Burley asked me to uh, do something for him during the crowning. During the crowning? Yes. I like Burley. You can tell me what you're going to do. I promise it will shock me. Burley does say you're a, a good egg. He calls me that all the time. He calls a lot of people that a lot, apparently. Um, we need the watch. His eyes go wide. The watch? Yes. You mean like Mr. Mister Witch's Shh, watch? Just just a watch from the middle of the stage. Maybe don't don't say it loudly. It's not that kind of good egg. We gotta kill him now. And Burley? Burley is the one who told the you you should do this. Yes. Roll a, roll a persuasion check. He's on the, the self-proclaimed... Uh, no, I, I don't do persuasion. I immediately fail all those. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't lie. You're just telling the truth. Well, yeah, I have no, I have no concept of consequences to. Gotcha. So <laughs> okay, so you're you're telling. Yeah, you you only tell the truth. So he looks into your eyes essentially, and he's like, he's like, I, I'm usually pretty good at seeing if people are dishonest, but there's just nothing back there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's all me, brother. It's all me. And you're so clean. Okay. Well, we're getting, we're, we're got, I gotta get. Yes, I have to get Mister Witch's. Do you, Mister Witch's watch? All right. Answer me. Watch. Answer me this question. Yes. If you say the right answer, I'm going to let you do it. Okay. Do. I took a bath. Will no. Nope. <laughs> will anyone get hurt? Anyone. Possibly. I could get seriously it, injured. Will anyone besides you? <laughs> oh get hurt? no no no! Yeah, everyone else is fine. <laughs> because I know there's things going on in the carnival. And I know there's stuff behind the scenes that I don't understand. And I know that Mr. Witch and Mr. Light know more than they let on. But they really are good people. I tell you, I'm good at I'm good at telling whether people are good or bad. And they're they're good people, so I don't want them to get hurt. Have you ever seen an arrow fly at the speed of an arrow? Yes, I have. <laughs> have you ever seen a goblin on a pocket watch do the same thing? I have a feeling I might <laughs> Be able to answer yes by the end of the evening. You will bear witness to something, (laughs) two things you probably have never seen before in your life. Excellent. My friend Prince is taking care of the other one. (laughs) (laughs) Very, very, you know what? This will be an exciting crowning, I promise you that. Okay, as long as no one gets hurt. All I need is just a sleeve ride. You, a sleeve ride you shall have. How do we do this? Just let me know whenever you're ready to go out on stage and I will... Drink. It's the dr- it's the drink that makes me tiny. Yeah, right? yeah. makes you tiny. Oh, I need your. Oh, well. I gave it to you. Okay, yeah. I will drink my potion and climb up in your sleeve, and that's all you need to do. And Very well. Just watch the show unfold from there. Well, they're about to start. Let's go find a seat. Let's do it. Okay. Should have warned him that he hands over that crown, just step away, <laughs> step, step back far away, away. <laughs> well, maybe ten feet or so. Two really big, st- three if you manage. <laughs> okay. Everybody be quiet. Okay. All right. So. The last thing that was said was Candlefoot said, uh, let's go find a seat. So Candlefoot, (coughs) Candlefoot and Rusty walk together into the big top as they walk through the gates. They walk past someone who's hanging around the doorway. Which one of you is that? Of the front. I'm, I'm kind of hanging around the front. Uh, I'll try to get the back, I guess. Josh, okay. you got like a fuzzy. You got a fuzzy mustache. mustache thing. Ooh. What is that? A fuzzy. Some of that toilet paper you've been eating. <laughs> yeah, I do something with it. That's right. Don't you don't want to go on the way out. Once you wipe with it, you don't want to go make it go to waste. <laughs> it goes disgusting. down like steel wool, comes out like an angel from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Let's move along. Rusty and uh, Candlefoot pass by Mick, who is standing at the doorway, the first opening way or whatever. Uh-oh. Little boy is upset. Can you shut my bedroom door? No! The fan! No, the, the bedroom door. Sorry, those at home. Juice is up. Juice is dead. <laughs> Juice is upset. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that loud. Juice, juice the dog. Okay, so you pass by uh, Mick, who is waiting in the opening that leads into the witch, the the big top. As you do so, you detect music is playing. The performers from the other the other acts and things are tie, are you know winding down. They're all moving aside. Um, um, general heist rule. Me and him made eye contact and. Not yeah. each other. Were you in the sleeve, just like peeking out? No, he's not in it yet. Not he's yet. walking in okay. with hand foot. Um, so at this point, I assume, uh, Prince, where have you found yourself? I'm sitting down. Okay. Tunnel vision, edges are blurred. <laughs> I can't see anything. I'm just okay. focused. Trying to hold in that duty. Um, and then... Uh, Sweating. Profusely. I'm yeah. damp. Yeah, no, sorry. I was trying to... Burley yeah. slash Eric is at the back, Burley. which makes sense because, uh, you know, he's closest to the staff area. You're disguised as Burley. Nobody's mm-hmm. really noticed. Everybody's just excited for the crowning of the witch light monarch. Oh, they better be. So, just as a, a note to everybody, because it hasn't come up a lot, I am easily amused by all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I'm just, ah, I'm taking it all You in. are easily amused. Uh, so, you guys, <clears throat> everything is settled. The crowd is quieted down. Some more regal music comes in. Um, whatever the non copyright version of Pomp and Circumstance <laughs> begins to play. Da, 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 da. No kiss, no Metallica. No, no, no kiss or Metallica. No, no, not, okay. no, this, is a very, this is a very regal moment. Mr. Witch is escorted. From the staff area, he walks right past Burley, being escorted by Durlagron, the displacer beast that you talked to at one point very early in the first episode. She's missing her baby. Who's missing her baby, Sorry. just like you're missing several things. Um, <clears throat> she escorts him from the wagon through the door into the coronation. Uh, Mr. Witch and Durlagron then stop. They begin to stand on the sidelines right next to Candlefoot. Who on there? So it's they they come and stand right next to Candlefoot. You're sitting. Let's say you're sitting on a bench, kind of right behind him. Okay. Um, so now would be. Now yeah. might be an optimal time for you to to uh, cool. to to hop in. So as they as as you right before you drink as as they arrive, because <laughs> remember Candlefoot remembers the plan. So Candlefoot. As Mr. Witch and um, Durlagron come to stand on the sidelines right next to Candlefoot, you're sitting right behind him. Candlefoot turns around and gives you a little nod um, for you to begin your thing. So what do you do? I nod back. Okay. And then I drug. Okay. I, 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 I drug it. I drink it and I chug it at the same time. You drink it and then very, very quickly you begin to shrink very timely. Um, let's see. Distracted by all the things going on, the crowd does not notice you shrink before them. You're already very small. So the crowd behind you does not notice you shrinking. I'm right behind him. Yeah, you're right behind him. You got a few step, well, a few goblin steps between the seat and where he's standing. Oh, okay. So I'm not like, he's not like within like arm's reach. No, not okay. currently. Um, so you are now very tiny. Yeah. And they begin to stand there at the sidelines. It's a witch like carnival. I, I gotta imagine they've seen this before. Yes, and as soon as you sit, as soon as you, as soon as you begin to shrink, Mister Light, who is at the middle directing all this, remember he's the more showy one. He is the sh- the kind of dark elf looking Shadarkai kind of guy. Both of them are that way, but he's the skinny one. He's wearing his leotard. He's got his pointy hat. I'm gonna sprinkle my fairy dust on as well. And as you sprinkle that fairy dust, he begins to wave the witch light vein around, and he begins to... This is the only off-the-cuff 
moment of <laughs> the big top extravaganza, he begins to say, Thank you, one and all, for coming to the Witchlight Carnival. As soon as he starts, like, getting everybody's attention, I'm going to shoot forward and, like, into Kettle Steam's pocket. Okay. Or no, not Kettle Steam, Candlefoot. Gotcha. Candlefoot's pocket. <laughs> you, go zooming, you go zooming into his pocket. Um, no one is any of the wiser because a giant golden weather vane is being waved around. Um, by Mr. Light. He says, thank you all for coming to our carnival this evening. Did you have a good time? And as he says that, everyone roars. <laughs> that one lady who was cheering during the snail race is like, her face has melted completely off. Frothing her, at the mouth. She, <laughs> she, yeah, yeah, she's uh, yeah, like, like an avatar, that one guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's, and, just, and just like every person who's ever been in front of a crowd and asked them how they did, he says, oh, you can do better than that. Did you have a good time tonight? And then everybody, <laughs> they're like, dust shakes off the top of the <laughs> um there you know people are people are passing everybody's having so much fun um and he says we it's our pleasure to provide for you such a wonderful place a place of whimsy a place of guile a place of having a grand old time but after you've been here for so long you must be rewarded with one final spectacle the crowning of the witch light monarch and then everybody <laughs> I'd like to point out this is the perfect time for Keith to throw us all under the bus. <laughs> Dead <Dumber> elf man <laughs> <laughs> Prince just explodes in his <laughs> <laughs> Lands off the rails, we're starting the distraction early. <laughs> That's the thing, I mean pooping yourself is a distraction no matter what. Just make it loud. <laughs> you still gotta run up on stage. <laughs> oh, Please, no. pixie somebody dust. where's the... Never mind, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Tackle the elf with the pixie dust on me, just... <laughs> 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 anyway. <laughs> back to the, so do the with us as you will. Plan. Take them nine sips. Yeah. Take them nine sips. So, so everybody, as everybody calms down, he says, so, you may think that Mr. Witch... Everybody, he... Points over there, everybody cheers. May choose whomst will be the witch like monarch. Whomst. But you whomst. would be wrong. And then everybody goes, <gasps> He says, And you may think that I, the fantabulous Mr. Light, will choose who is the witch like monarch. But you'd be wrong. Oh, God. No one. Gasp. But the witch light vein knows who shall be the witch like monarch now, my sweet vein. <laughs> Tell us, weave your beautiful golden thread to the one who has brought the most joy to the carnival, as you have done it a thousand times before. Do it once more for us tonight. Show us who will be the witch light monarch. And he points it to the sky, and then a golden thread nice. <laughs> points out of the top. Palashka. And it swirls into the sky it goes around the crowd it weaves its way all around and as it does so everyone is wondering could it be me could it be i did i wear my butterfly wings pro appropriately did i do enough kindness did i eat enough chili dogs they wonder i hope <laughs> <laughs> if that's the marker <laughs> but there was one group of people throughout the night that did the most good they found Candlefoot's voice. They saved the fat man from the dragonfly. They ate the most chili dogs. They ate the most chili dogs. They were extremely kind to the pixies who were very sad. And that we was your group. You helped the lady with the weird fruit thing. You helped the lady with the weird... The sandwich maker? The sandwich lady. Oh, yeah. You, Bar soap. You, um... One sna you participated in snail races. Help Sundapple. You helped Sundapple. We And we. <laughs> you did it all. So that was what your group did. But, as I explained before, Rusty is a bit rough around the edges. <laughs> Eric is accidentally intimidating to everyone. <laughs> Mick kind of keeps a low profile and doesn't put his hands quite on everything. To be fair, if the vein was tracking everything, I did promise to help Kale Steam burn down the... <laughs> <laughs> The, 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 what, the vein is not all knowing. <laughs> it's some knowing. It sees the best in people. And, and so, based on that, 
Your estimations were correct that Prince would be crowned the witch light monarch. Woo! The witch light vein saw how he comforted a child. It saw how he was a good sport in the snail ride. It saw how he just was a very kindly fellow, very helpful, despite an insatiable desire to understand what's going on. The witch light thread circles around the top, and then it makes its way, boop, and boops Prince on his little kitty legs. <laughs> and, and, and it's all over. <laughs> And with that, literally, please roll a constitution saving throw. 17. 17. So you, for 17 feet. You, <laughs> it is a long walk. I do it with every, pride. Every step. Every step. I mean, I'm, everybody who's listening to this has had the bubble guts at some point. Mm. Let's take every, a word. Every step. It's like a every step is just a little bit of gas. Poop comes out. <laughs> every step you want to like you want to burp and poop and and lay on the ground and die all at the same time, but you hold it in. You use that kitty concentration. That's the shots before the earthquake. <laughs> um, you make it. You make it. You're making your way there as Mister <clears throat> Witch and Candlefoot make their way towards the center of the big top al- r- alongside Mister w- Mister Light. As they step into the spotlight that comes from the top of the, the big top, a golden glint can be seen just on the inside of Mr. Witch's suit jacket. He's got a gun. Watch. <laughs> golden gun. 